So as soon as I see fractions, I start getting a headache. I don't know about you guys, they're not my favorite thing. I'm going to show you a math trick to get rid of them. This problem will be a lot easier for us to solve if we can turn it into whole numbers, true? Yes. This is partly why we practiced it, practiced yesterday with greatest common factor and least common multiple yesterday. Because if I'm looking at a denominator of three for thirds and a denominator of two for these two halves, if I multiply three and two, I get six, yes? So if I can come up with some number that both the denominators are a multiple of, or it's a multiple of those, or they are factors of, I can multiply this part of the equation and this part of the equation by the six, and I can del basically delete the denominators because I'm gonna multiply them and get rid of them. Watch what happens. And let's just do this over here to the side. If I have six times one third, that's what this part here is, right? When we multiply a whole number by a fraction, it's really like saying six over the invisible one. And we multiply numerators and denominators and then divide to simplify. So watch what happens with this. What's six times one? And what's one times three? Three. And what is six divided by three? Two. I can now come over here and rewrite this as two x. Do you guys see that? Yeah. Minus, we're still gonna have this whole number five. We're just getting rid of the fraction part of it. Well, let's do the whole thing. So if I do two times five, I get 10 plus one is 11. So now we're gonna do six times 11 over two because that's what this whole number is when I make it an improper fraction. Right now it's mixed, I made it improper. You guys see that? So six times 11 would be 66. One times two would be two. two. 66 divided by two is 33. 33. So this I'm changing to 33. It's a big number, but it's no longer a fraction. I'd much rather work with 33 than a half something, right? Is equal to, we have to do the same thing here. What's two times six? Plus one? 13. So now I have six over one times 13 over two. This is partly why you guys have your calculators. What is six times 13? over 2, so I'm going to divide 78 by 2, and I get 39. I've rewritten that equation. It's got some big numbers in it now, right? I've got minus 33 and uh, 39, but there's no more fractions. And do we know what to do with these numbers now? If we see subtraction, what do we do? We add. Let's add 33. We're going to get 2x is equal to 39 plus 33 is 72. Yeah. Opposite away. We're going to do the opposite. I have 2x, that's multiplication, so we're going to divide by uh, 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 uh. 2. What's 72 divided by 2? You guys all have a calculator. I know, 36. x equals 36. Oh so anytime we have a fraction, we can multiply like, let's look at the next page. The very first problem has one half in it. 
I don't have to multiply by 6 because there's no third here. There's only the half. So if I take this side of the equation and this side of the equation and I multiply them by 2, I just have to be careful that I do it to every part of the equation. And that's going to get rid of the fraction. Does anybody like working with fractions? No, no. Yeah. So what's 2 times 1? Two. Divided by 2 is? Four. 2 divided by 2? One. X. You can write the 1 if you want, or you can leave it invisible. This is distributive property because I'm multiplying this by everything that's in there, right? Claw. I've got my claw. What's 2 times 6? And then I also have to do the claw to the other side of the equation. 1 times 2 is 2. two. Can I subtract? Mm -hmm. Opposite away. Opposite away. And what happens when I have decimals? Just use your calculator and calculate them. If you see addition, you do... Subtraction. Right? If you see multiplication, you do... Even if it's a decimal, you just use your calculator to do them. I want you guys to try this page, A, B, C, and D. And then can I have you turn the page real quick? Yes. Because this is where we're going to stop today, at the bottom of this page. Cross off number 9, we're not doing it. But look at number 10 down here. It says, consider the equation P equals 10.25 plus 4.5 N. It is. I don't like P and N. They're weird. I like X and Y. But whatever. They're just letters standing for numbers, right? It says, find P when N is equal to negative 1 or N is equal to 0. You're going to take this equation and you're just going to rewrite it and put in these amounts for the no, for yeah, the end. The way of that. Yeah. So this one would be rewritten as the variable p is equal to 10.25 plus 4.5 times negative 1. Do you see what I did there? I just took this value for n and I put it in where the n is. And that's what I want you guys to try today. You're going to work on these four problems on your own. You're going to work on these six problems. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Down here, it says find n. So instead of substituting in where the n was, you're going to substitute in for the variable p. Right, so this one would be written as 14.75 equals 10.25 plus 4.5 n. We're just doing different sides of the equation. So you're going to basically do 10 problems in your packet with your calculator and asking me for help if you need it, and then going to ST Math for the rest of class. Questions? I'm still recording. I know. <laughs>